I compose my first list while Jesus is in Israel. I hear there were goings on throughout the night and that it doesn't look good. While his poor mother lingers, exhausted in outer doorways, I write down a list of tasks that will march me through the preparations of Sunday's dinner. The menu, the chilly grocery aisles, while his disciples try to blend in with the other shoppers, earphones attached as if listening to a basketball game. But really, they're frantically tuning in and out of newscasts because they couldn't stay with him. They just couldn't. And as I sort the mail, gas bill and magazine offers, soldiers lash him to the post. And soon blood runs everywhere. And short devastations quiver from the slashed bend of his back and his gasping bloody mouth. And I try to unclutter the foyer. Where do these boxes come from? And the rug keeps going crooked. Like his steps when they finish with him. I need yeast bread. Sweet, yet understated. We'll improvise as usual. And they haul him now to face the crowd. Pilot fumes that this has landed with him. The three bean salad, I, I can make that early, and the cake too, and the bread. <sighs> the people as one make their choice, which you would think would be a no brainer. But as I put away the cleaning supplies, I, I have to stop for the noise. The immensity of hatred. It's mystifying how abruptly they turned on him. And I am weak, drained of all goodness because I should have been there. I should not have trusted that things would work themselves out. But they're taking him now to where the tools are kept. And I finished doing what I'm doing because what else can I do? The crowd thunders through my rooms, rattling the cake pans and the paring knives. And I work away, looking up just once to gaze at their point of passion. And of all things, mercy Mercy glitters in his gaze as he drags that cross through my living room and out the back door. My bread is rising. Something in all of this must fill with lightness. By the time they hang him, my back is killing me. I, I don't eat, but I, I take a, a sip of wine at the precise moment that they touch vinegar to his lips and the ruddy sky thickens to black. My house smells of food and the corners are swept clean. And I rest and watch television tucked up where it's warm and unchaotic. And I feel him resting too unbreathing in a silent cave. He and I made it through the day, bearing tedium and ragged walk of hours for the sake of what will happen before we even begin the feast. <laughs>